Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome to the fourth one in the series, the fourth video on the Season 5 patch. And today, my great nemesis, uh, this great faction I always lose against, Free Folk. And uh, no other is here than one of the greatest Free Folk players of all time, I can say. It's uh, Larix. And um, yeah, it's it's a very special one. I, it's always a special one, but today is a very, very special one because it's Free Folk. So we, we are very grateful to have you on this video. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think we can jump right in um, to the to 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 the part which we uh, or what we always cover. Uh, we cover where does this faction come from? And uh, Daniel, j you 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 just lead the way. Where where does this faction come from? Obviously, from beyond the wall, but um, obviously, other than that, yeah, <clears throat> I think we uh, come from. I mean, you know, like free folk always is in a special place it's always considered to be uh top tier competitive if played correctly but um it was always prone to being pushed to a certain play style right you i mean obviously we had mans for periods yeah. um and it was it was uh, not only your nemesis <laughs> and you know that's also a little bit true for um s4 um, I think the diversity was okay-ish for free folk standards. We had um, Steyr, obviously. Um, we definitely saw Varamir in combination with Mac, for example, high activation play style, both of them. Um, but you could also run um, Mac Commander, no problem. We mm. saw um, also a little bit of other free folk commanders, Rattleshirt, for example. Um, some played him with kind of, yeah, quite successful. And um, that's basically it. So the um, the balance within the faction um, was again okay, but um, especially uh, in the attachment um, uh, with the attachments and with some units, there were definitely outliers uh, like the giant, uh, the mammoth, the poor mammoth, um, <laughs> and some attachments that we didn't didn't really see. So we yeah. had. I think some hopes for free folk and um, with free folk patches or patches in general, uh, when it comes to free folk, I'm always a little bit nervous because um, they tend to receive uh, nerve after, after nerve after nerve. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can they still hold up? Um, but at the same time, there's always, there are always like some hidden treasures <laughs> for us, you know, yeah. whether it is a new, new units Soon. released or yeah. Yeah. some uh, changes where, yeah, you, you don't know maybe right from the beginning um, what are the consequences. And I think this time uh, we are also in for something like this. So let's look at the changes, I guess. Yeah, yeah I guess so too. Well, the, the, as you said, the, the change back then when they took away Insignificant mm -hmm. was a big one. Right, but at the same time, you created this new meta of the hidden trap spam and all you know on this uh, nine activation really effective list with Borok and and raiders and you know it, yeah so so as you said um sorry w wanted to answer no it's just yeah maybe where do we come from we come from an age of traps age of traps right? yeah yeah age of traps and um, that was definitely a pillar for for competitive list building but mm. not only competitive list building um it was not um not a strange thing to see two three or even four uh, instances instances of traps. Exactly. so yeah it was i think anticipated <laughs> that yeah. this um, yeah. will be changed and yeah or yeah. yeah exactly so all over a great change but before we jump into the uh the hidden traps uh topic yeah. we will cover the general changes which you know, include hidden traps, but we will start off with mans. So, or actually, we'll uh, boisterous um, um, charisma, right? So, um, yeah, it, obviously a big change of the whole meta, and we will just, you know, just 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 cover it really briefly because we did it mm -hmm. uh, before, or we or we, you know, the, these changes are faction wide, and um, in general, we think that this change was highly needed boisterous charisma was not like 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 not 
not really considered OP, but it gave a lot of players like a bad player experience because it yep. shuts down so many abilities, so much stuff that can go on that 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 can happen on the table, and that was just a thing that does not really contribute to the fun of the game. So yeah, that that's actually on Boisterous Charisma for me. Do you have anything to to add on Boisterous Charisma? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a little bit undecided here because obviously it was a negative play experience for a lot of players, especially yeah. newer ones. But at the same time, it was a unique ability. And I have a little bit, I, yeah, I, I don't like the tendency that they they seem to to flatten a lot of um, in yeah very individual specific abilities. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also a little bit sad. And I don't know whether the, um, what they, the effect they gave in, um, <clears throat> in exchange is, yeah, I don't know. It, it feels to me um, a little bit random, so to speak, because it's again tokens, and maybe we see now really the patch of, yeah, the the, the, the flooding tokens. Mm. Um, we will see. Yeah. But for men's, that's what we are talking here, because I think the the changes will have the biggest impact on factions like Mattel or Greyjoy. But um, for men's, yeah, it, it has to be considered um, as a nerf to men's, and that was. Yeah, from a perspective of uh, infection balance, not really needed. No, to be honest. Yeah. No. Yeah, as you said, Mansworth once, like yeah, omnipresent everywhere, right? In the S, what, what was it? S three, right? In S three, with 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 his old card and with with the insignificant and um, always in trappers, and from there on, he got nerfed and nerfed and nerfed down. Um, and what you say is to totally correct. I, 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 what I do not like about S5, while I can appreciate a lot of like small changes they do to the game to, to increase the balance, is uh, as, as you said, they, they, they mush it into one pile of like stuff that everyone can have. Like everyone can, can, get an access to movement now Brathians, right everyone can can can, can do tokens now everyone yeah. can right and that that that's a thing which they should consider in future patches to make to make a little bit more individual characteristics to factions right a little bit exactly. little bit back especially for commanders and that's that's what we said in the in the in the community review that we were all hoping for Yes, yeah, some greater changes on commanders to make them individually appealing or like to make it more, you know, faction. Yeah, to, to, to give more characteristics of the faction, right? And that's that that's this is something we did not get. Um, yeah. But that's ma but maybe next time. Christmas, Christmas was in a, in a way exciting and people, you know, yeah. wanted to make this list that is completely immune to everything. And yes. And now it's like, OK, I okay, get <laughs> one of two tokens. That's that's not bad or anything, but it's not like, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, again. Okay, so okay. that one covered, cool. I guess. So we can go to this big topic for free folk, yes. which is which is really hidden traps. So the change is just, it comes down to this, or it it, it it it's one hit less. So now you can only do three hits instead of four when having. Uh, when the unit has full ranks. So if an infantry unit has uh, full ranks, it used to get four hits, now it gets three. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's actually it. Um, but this goes a long way. And I think, uh, Dan uh, Daniel, you can you can guide us through it, why this is so big for free fall. Yeah, we can we can remain here on this page and look a bit, little bit at the, at the trappers and yeah. also on Barok. I mean, for example, like Barok getting a nerf, definitely good. It's yeah? fine. So <laughs> don't get me wrong, and trappers, Trap is um, receiving a nerf completely fine. And I think it's it's a moderate nerf. Um, if you think about it, you know, it's it's one uh, uh, hit less. Yeah. That's not the world you could you could think. But like for the strategy that you um, apply a lot of auto auto hits um, as your or one main source of damage, if not the main source of damage, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it as you said, it, it goes a long way because like if you think about it um, in terms of efficiency or uh, eff yeah, eff effective, effective, you you know what I mean? Effectiveness. Like, it's not as effectiveness. Effectiveness. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, um, effectiveness is definitely uh, reduced. Um, for infantry, it's it's only a twenty-five percent, right? But if you look at and, and we we. Um, wrote this down for you if you go to cavalry or um, a two-rank unit 
it's already a third because um, you don't get uh, three hits anymore, but only two. And if you are t if you are talking about solo units, it went down from two dice to one die. So it's uh, already fifty percent uh, fifty percent um, <clears throat> less effective. And um, that's that's not uh, the whole story yet because uh, one thing that could happen with your old traps is if you which was um, which was the case in S3, um, for example, if you had Ranger Hunters, um, which were really hard to deal with because they they uh, dealt a lot of like, two attacks and a lot of hits, etc., etc. Um, they had, what, five plus armor, I think, and if you yep. had a vulnerable on them yep. and you then dealt <clears throat> uh, four hits, it was um, a possibility that you could strip a complete rank with only one trap. And... Um, that was nice because the uh, the attack profile went down and so on. Mm. This is uh, out of yeah, um, not an option anymore. And the same goes basically for um, two traps on a cavalry unit, like something uh, like veterans from Targaryens back when they had a fi uh, five plus armor. You could definitely strip uh, a rank of a cavalry unit with two inches of traps, which uh, could trigger from the free maneuver and then the whatever shooting. Um, so I think um, the whole strategy uh, of getting A, um, damage, and B, like a little bit of defensiveness from traps um, is significant, significantly worse now. Mm. So this is good because Freefork has to think about other and different strategies um, for winning the game. Yeah. It's not to say that traps are, that the strategy is not viable anymore, but... Um, it's questionable whether it will serve you as good as it did. Um, and again, like FreeFog was able to win tournaments, competitive tournaments, but not like it was not um, oppressive or OP in any way. So, yeah. One last, last thing, though, the whole movement control that you can pull off with traps didn't change at all. Yeah. So. I think it's still advisable to have like one or two traps in your inventory, yeah. especially if you are up against Baratheon. You know, it's, it's so awesome if you have Vigrid in the box and uh, yes. you see the champion of the stack, you know, movement one. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. It's uh, still a nice moment to have. But and, and the whole movement control strategy um, is there. But I, for my part, um, find myself building lists with maybe one trap mm. one hidden traps yeah yeah me too i i i i just did did it um two days ago two two days ago i had to play against um targaryens and I had to play a, a, a free folk and um i also put i i i again relied on borok actually for this one again put him on cave dwellers um which is just a great combo in my in my book because the morale is basically you know, yeah. not 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 an issue anymore, um, and I felt really good with just having one trap, and um, yeah, building in other tools like the you know we will cover that later with Savage Giant for example or the Skin Changer. So there are, as you said, different tools you can put in a list now and not make this you know hidden traps, hidden traps, hidden traps everywhere. Yeah. So that's and 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 that's that's the thing I can appreciate about the patch, right? Definitely. Okay, so with this covered, let's go from away from the general changes to something that is unique to um, well, maybe not unique like in like overall, but it's unique. It's a unique change for for the free folk. So the Jarl who 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 brings out flank now ignores the usual attachment limits and can just be put in whatever, right? So um, and um, yeah, we talked about it before. So when you when you make use of something like the skin changer and the bear and put the yarl in, that could be a thing. But there are other options like the spear wives can be pretty devastating when played correctly somewhere back there, or uh, the frozen shore hunters also. So uh, I think there is room for for this attachment to be to be tried out in 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 certain lists in certain matchups. What do you think about the yarl? Yeah, again, like uh, it was one point before, right? But now it can yeah. be combined with other attachments. That's, that's uh, um, the change. And 
In my personal opinion, it could be very well zero points and could be, you know, because it's mm -hmm. a free thing to outflank and so on. And, and it's still, I would still be sitting there and thinking, okay, the, is it good to outflank this game? You know, um, I would have Yal with me, but I don't know whether I would use outflank. Um, so, but yeah, you could, you could combine, for example, um, the skin changer mm -hmm. with the Yal now. That's nice. And um, there probably are other um, other combinations to, to figure out. It's for me, it's a very good why not change. Yeah, it, it makes sense. And um, but I don't think this will completely turn the meta on its head for free folk or something. Yeah. No, probably not. But I think like for casual gaming or friendly games, nice. there can yeah. be really, you know, n nice stuff to be just tried out and do funny stuff. Just put funny stuff on the table, right? And still, yeah, maybe like yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing, because you mentioned spear rise, like spear rise with Harmer are obviously a very nice combination when they have like then um, a seven inch move and can march and uh, pivot march and have um, have sentinel and so on. And like imagine them like coming on from from the side angle from the flank and you know like yeah, there is there are things to try out, especially in casual games. So nice yeah. change. Yeah, nice change. So, and now we talked about it uh, before because it's in, ad, in inevitable to talk about it, right? So, <laughs> so now let's let let's do it, right? So, the skin changer, a whole lot of discussion opened up, right? Not not only because of the bear, but also because, uh, yeah, it's it. I mean, who 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 does not love ch skin changers, right? In the in the books. In yep. the show, and before we start into the rules, great models also. Great models yep. also, and they were a little bit on the shelf, right? Because especially the eagle and the wolf were not really good, right? They were not yep. really why. Why should you take them, right? And um, before we start into the abilities, I really have to say I love skin changes, skin changes lore wise. And what I really liked about the old skin changer was that he yep. used to switch those animals um, always at the start of the round. Now you can only choose once, right? When you deploy the unit, you have to decide, what do I need? Do I need a shifting precision thing? Do I need a, a, a charge, better charges or, or worse charges and I need vicious? Or, did, or do I need this solo on the, on, on the table? And, and I, 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 guess, I guess most people will tend to do the bear, but now with these changes, and especially since they give precision to each and every unit attacking, or vicious to each and uh, every unit attacking this particular um, uh, unit. Yeah, I think you. I know that everyone's talking about the bear, but I I think the changes are quite quite good. So so there will be games where you say I need the precision, I need the vicious, right? So um, yeah. good change. I think you make, yeah you make a great point here because like. Um, skin changes meant flexibility always, and that's what what the law also, I guess, entangles. But yeah. um, and and they still have this, but it's something you bring to the table. Mm. And once you are you started the game, it's it's gone. But in the beginning, when you look at the other side of the table um, at your opponent's list, and you see maybe um, a giant list, for example, where you yeah. where you think, okay, putting precision. On mm -hmm. a unit um, would be very nice here. You could consider um, choosing the eagle, and so on. And the same goes for maybe a very um, moral fragile or even or even moral heavy unit uh, or list where you really need to to your opponent to fail some panic tests and you need the vicious whatever. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. And but to go step by step, the first thing uh, to mention, the skin changer lost stalwart. And is now one point, right? So we shouldn't forget this. Um, True. No stalwart. Yeah. Stalwart, yeah. Um, which is big. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. No stalwart raiders anymore. Yeah. Which is, again, good because like, morale five raiders are like ridiculous. It shouldn't yes. be. Shouldn't yeah. be like this, right? So, shouldn't be existing. Yeah. yeah. And this is good. Um, now you have to choose at the start of the game um, slash uh, when deploying. Yeah. And. The bear obviously is the, the prime choice because the bear, I mean, all animals got upgrades. And again, like eagle and wolf are viable options now. Um, but the bear is on a different level because it's kind of a separate unit. It works like, like you know it from Ghost or um, like, uh, I think old bears um, 
worked back in the days, 1.6 or whatever it was. Mm. And um, it activates right after your radar unit or your skin changer unit. And um, it's not a separate uh, separate activation by any means. It's not calculate and uh, not counted for calculating um, pass tokens, but it's a very solid unit now. It has um, three um, wounds. It has defense three, morale three. Yeah, so it might crazy. even su su survive some yeah. uh, legitimate uh, charges or attacks. No free maneuver though. But then again, like three attacks with thund thundering and something I, uh, for me, it t took a while to, to even uh, to even see this. They um, have the effect that every unit they are engaged with, um, they reduce the defense roll by minus one. <laughs> this is not so bad, to yeah. be honest, because uh, by themselves, they now have super sundering mm. when they attack. And for yeah. everything else, they, um, they give sundering. So what the eagle and the wolf is like their main thing, the bear has it like, as a build, side effect. Build in. Yeah. yeah. It's like build a side effect. effect. Yeah, exactly. So, and they can, you know, having, having to, to, to like for, for newest players, why this is so big, um, the, why the bear is so great. You have a separate unit. You have a separate solo tray that you can put in the way uh, yeah. of a charge. Yeah. Um, that is a separate attack. I mean, think about it. It's a four point unit now because of adaptive that has nine attack dice. Mm -hmm. Right. If you just, yeah. Edit and the bear can contest. It has three victory points. It cannot hold objectives or anything, but it can contest. So, cav unit contested. Mm. What you don't need to do uh, a lot of damage. Yeah. And even with a deck profile, you could um, easily contest an infantry unit. So um, the bear very very strong, and we are not talking. Maybe Chris, you can outline a little bit for uh, our viewers um, the debates going on about the bears and um, yeah all the yeah, drama. Sure. Yeah, well, the drama in short is um, the, the, that on the on the on the unit it says that you deploy um, the bonded bear as soon as when you put down the skin changer unit, you can you have to decide right eagle wolf bear and then you put the you can put the bear in short range um, of a friendly unit. Not the skin yeah. changer unit, but a friendly unit, and that opens up a lot, right? So just think about the 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 most prominent thing is uh, Shadow Cat, right? So Shadow Cat, Shadow Cat is deployed uh, start of any round that the free fall player decides. So you can probably you 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 could you could you could um, when you close down your deployment zone and make it impossible to spawn him next to each and every unit. What will happen first when you when you start the game is that you have to deploy. A unit so you put the shadow cat out and you put the the you, you put the bear right next to it so and this opens up that you could could potentially spawn bears um, and not only one but bears in the enemy deployment zone and we are all sure that this will be faq soon um but this is a, this is the discussion going on since it's not saying skin change a unit and because of the rule the rule states if you cannot deploy a unit in your deployment zone while deploying, the first action yeah. you do when you start the round, you have to you you have to deploy a unit as your like first action. And that opens up this yeah, let's say it's a, a exploit. It's an exploit of the rules, right? And this it is why it be an exploit, yeah. yeah. And it's it's very game breaking because like if you have high activations, you cannot really do anything no. against it. And um, um yeah. Um, yeah, you get charged by three or four bears and it's ridiculous. And you could also yeah. like, because the, the bear deployment is not like a, a regular deployment, which is limited to your deployment zone. Like even if you just deploy, you, you don't exploit this, right? You don't block your own deployment zone, whatever. You just put the, the shadow units down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then you put one bear, like in short range of, let's say your skin changer unit, six inches in front of it. Mm -hmm. And then you put the next uh, skin changer unit with another bear, you could, you know, have a lot of yeah, you can stack it up in in, in, yeah. in the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of bare bridge reaching to your opponents. To exactly, and and and, and 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 yeah. As you say, we, we are all sure this is not meant to be in the in in the game. Uh, so that's uh, do not get used to it. We we would say right, then do not get used to it to put Better bears in, in in enemy deployment zones or stack stack your way up to the enemy with with bears. Right, it's um probably not there for a long time. Um, but as you said, I I just had this game and I had my bear out against Targaryens 
and um, I made sure to always weaken the my, my opponent, right, Th who was able to charge the bear or attack the bear. And as long as you keep that weakened with the three defense and the three morale, you can you can that that guy can pack yeah, a punch. Maybe some terrain sprinkled in and so on, right? Yeah, there. exactly, exactly. So when you played right, this 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 guy or this bear is so much more defensive than you might think. With yeah. but but the three three so defense three morale three is incredible incredible good right um, yeah and it's like I mean it's I think it's not easy to play in a way that you have to once more plan ahead with your solo trays and you have a lot of trays anyway right and you can yeah. easily yeah. block yourself and Bl so block on yourself so in yeah yeah um, but. Uh, yeah, you can also block your opponent if you play well, <laughs> so it's it's very <laughs> nice. And um, I personally like this playstyle. I know um, s some players consider this a little bit obnoxious or, or, or gamey or whatever, mm. but um, I'm happy that the pets are back. So yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as they get rid of the exploit, I'm totally fine yeah. with it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's in on the skin changer. So let's now go to the tactics cards we got, and. Um, I heard a lot of play. A lot of players were a little bit, you know, frustrated when Craster was changed mm. because Craster used to or was able in S three, was able to, uh, in in uh, yeah in S three was able yeah. to was able to heal back giants and they changed that to infantry units. So now and and this heal, this this once in a game when you really need it to heal a giant back to two. Or two yeah. heal back two that was big right and they took it away. I think you can still play giant list if you want to, but I considered this. Simon want, wanted to go into the direction of this is a horrid army. This yeah. is like a lot of infantry, a lot of like you know wildlings approaching the the, the wall, right? Which is which is good, right? So uh, you know you know it's not really in the books or in the show that you can just. That just four yeah. giants appear, right? <laughs> without any guidance, I mean, without I mean, any. They created, they created, yeah. introduced a, a, a giant commander. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know, but but I I considered this as this is you know this is the Makes way sense. back to horde army, and um, what I was saying is uh, a lot of players also said we need a little tweak mm -hmm. or some optimization to the Mac uh, tactics um, deck. I personally never had a, like like a big problem with the mag tactics deck. I considered it it was pretty, you know, there was some heal in it, there was some attacks in it, there were even that rock boulder was it, right? Like a ranged attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, a ranged attack on it. So I I I considered it was quite fine, but I'm not I'm not a free folk main. So what do you make of the enrage change on Mac the Mighty? Um I do, like I, I would um, disagree a little bit with um, the analysis that the deck is fine. Like mm -hmm. um, there are some cards that are really, really mediocre to say the least. Yeah. Um, and 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 rage is not one of them. <laughs> so okay. So, um, <laughs> but it's I'm happy that mm -hmm. they um, changed something regarding the tactics deck. But I think it's only it can only be the be the beginning. Um, because let me just um, look it up real quick. For example, like Trample's awful. Um, yeah, not that, a good card. That's that's true. Yeah, Trample. Defiant Roar is also like really. I mean, you get one token. Yeah. On a condition, it's like that's not a good card. Mm -hmm. And um, and Rage was always fine because uh, because of the synergy with the with the normal giant, the savage giant, right? Mm -hmm. So and now, I mean, nice. You have one more token. That's good. I take it, um, mm. but I think there are other cards in the deck, and um, if you want to see giant lists again, this is um, maybe a good beginning, good start, but uh, probably not enough. Not enough. Okay. Okay. So you would you 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 wanted more changes to 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 Mac or the 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 tactics deck of Mac? Yeah, as I yeah. said, like the two, okay. two, two, two specific cards, Trample and um, mm. Defined War, would have been nice. Um, yep. That would have been my suspects, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is yeah. what it is, and uh, maybe next time, yeah, definitely good, yeah. Okay, so the bigger one, the more interesting one, meta changing one, yeah. is bit bitter demise. Bitter demise is a unique card. It's not it's not in the whole game. It's just for Styre. 
So that's what we got. I mean, the name is unique. We have to talk. Okay, about okay. It. The name is unique. The name is unique. So, yeah. so basically, they took away Final Strike from him, which was a way better card than bitter demise so let's just yeah. read through it so everyone knows final strike or i just repeat it so final strike basically did when you received a certain number of wounds including the panic test you got this as Me hits either. back yeah from for, for, for melee yeah so so you got this back from um as hits right and bitter demise goes one, one thing to add like yeah sure if if in 12 12 inches or long range from styre uh, it, it was minus one Exactly. It was minus one defense. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, like for the Baratheons when you have crown, right? I, or yeah, I think I, I guess so. So okay, so bitter bitter demise is way worse. So now it's when this unit is destroyed. So it's not on any unit on somewhere where you get a big hit. It's only when you are destroyed. So very conditional. And before removing, you do a melee attack with your highest attack die value, which is Okay, right? Which is fine. J just imagine cave dwellers. It could be fine. And if it's Dyer's unit, it may reroll any attack dice. So it's, I, I would say it's not a, like a horrible card, but thinking about what Styre did in, in, like in, 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 in season four, um, this take, to, to take Final Strike away from him changes the meta because the these these styro lists which you will al always saw like a second list or f or vice versa it will it, it, yeah. it was one of these lists i guess it will change now what do you think yeah for sure like um because the stylist was heavily leaning on auto hits from traps yes and final strike and final strike and yeah. yeah both are kind of gone or i mean definitely not as good as before and uh, I think the change to Final Strike is um, more impactful than the change to Traps, probably for the list. Yeah. Because let me just, we, we don't have to go into details, but one thing Final Strike didn't target the defender. Like, if you think about something like North, um, Winter's Coming, I mean, mm -hmm. um, Bitter Demise can simply be shut off by Winter's Coming, yeah. for example, because it targets your own unit. True. Um, and. Again, it's like your average attack profile, if you're not take, uh, talking about cave dwellers, is something like six, seven, whatever, on four six, plus. Six, seven on four, yeah. yeah. That's nothing. With rerolls, like, sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah but <laughs> Just sometimes. only on Steer's unit. They could have done something like, I yeah. don't know, if you are in long range of Steer's unit. Or so I think it's way worse. Yeah. And um, I don't say it's um, unnecessary or uh, unjustified. It definitely is. Um, but I agree with your analysis. It, this will this will change. And this like, will change. If I'm thinking about um, competitive list building for free folk a lot, as you can imagine. And I am looking at other commanders now, which is probably intended and good. Mm. Um, but I don't. I I hope I don't end up with like two Varamir lists. You know, <laughs> yeah. like um, this this would be then again, yeah. Then I would prefer playing Styre and Varamir. True. Um, yeah. Does this but, give room to to rattle short a little bit more? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Not for me, I guess, mm. um, because I, it doesn't really so for me. It doesn't really solve any problems because my my, yeah. my stylist was also like very um, infantry heavy and could heal a lot. And I'm definitely uh, looking at the Weeper right now. Mm. Um, I found this commander to be very interesting because it can heal. Yeah. Um, it has, um, uh, it has interesting cards, so to speak. Yeah. 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 So leaning into panic now. Okay. Um, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. So that's on the tactics cards that got changed. Well, actually there was that one change on, um, uh, uh, regroup and reform, but that was just a word. It was just a quality change. So we didn't mention it. So let's go to units now. Um, there was that change on um, the Harma's Vanguard, which yeah. basically took away the condition to the, uh, to that this unit has to charge, which makes it more usable in general. But us both think that it won't change much in terms of list building or the Free Folk meta. Do you have anything to add on this? No, it doesn't solve the problem um, yeah. of the unit. So, yeah, yeah, but true. but again, it's it's easily. A, more easy to use now so try it out if maybe you find a way to make try, it work yeah maybe and and one big one one big or be, because as you said it doesn't solve the problem one big problem i see is not only 
that it costs five points and that there are other units that you might change like 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 yeah. the like the uh, what is it the the war wagon the um chariot uh, the chariot exactly so so oh. the, so there are other units which you might switch in but but what i do not what what, what i most hate about this unit or not saying hate but what i most d- dislike about this unit is that is that does it it, it it, it does not fuel into the free folk tactics deck at all, right? Yeah. There's no card you can real really use with them. Regroup and reform, uh, coordination tactics, and all that kind of stuff is not usable with this unit. So that's really really a bummer, and really a turn off for me. So um, so let's go to something way more interesting: the Savage Giant. Mm-hmm. So the Savage Giant used to be something that you try to ignore, even though it came right at you, right? Because it didn't do a lot yeah. of wounds, because it was it was just one die on a two. Um, so you so it was easily, um, yeah, easy to ignore him, right? As soon yeah. as he had no wounds. So now they changed that, and they and they took a took 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 um, away some of the randomness of these D three. Um, D3 um, uh, dice or the D3 die you have to roll when you when 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 you attacked. So um, yeah, what does the Savage Giant do to for you now? Yeah, the, the Savage Giant was considered to be bad, and it kind of was to be honest. But I think it still could be used because um, you can. I mean, you can ignore it in a way, but you do at least two wounds and a vicious panic test you did in yeah. uh, back then, right? So um and it was always very good for contesting objectives yeah. um in the right game modes um if you don't know which game modes uh, these are check out our our um, game mode yeah podcast, we cover right? it there too yeah 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 um but again like now it's a little bit it has a little higher ceiling because you have four dice on three plus um and they simply ignore armor saves that's different than do it from doing auto wounds and mm-hmm. we already talked about this um that it's um it's worse right it is worse because you can be blocked by shield wall and which from a rational standpoint seems a little bit silly but whatever mm. um and um, you have the panicked token that you get if you um do a successful charge gotcha. so that's cool and while um back then you you got additional wounds on your d3 so to speak you now gain additional attack dice which is worse than a flat wound right yes so because you still have to land those hits mm-hmm. um for me it's a good change because you can also now combine this um with overwhelming assault adding crit blow to the mix which was of no use with the old giant. So this is nice um, that they can do this now, this uh, combination. And um, yeah, but then again, you you lack answers to, to certain things that you really want to have um, auto wounds against. But mm-hmm. I like it. Like I, I yeah. always liked my giant. And um, I think now you can, uh, again, do more stuff with this. Also, one thing to, to mention, the synergy with right leaders, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now you have like five five attack dice hitting on twos, right out of the bat. So, yeah, good yeah. change. And just imagine the old styre with it. Remember the old styre with plus one attack die and stuff. So that yeah. can really go out of hand, right? So the, maybe the NCU, there, yeah, 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 the NCU. So so maybe there is, um, you know. They were ahead of their time, maybe back then. But okay, so that's all the changes. And now Daniel will guide you through his personal season five tryouts. Uh, They took all that stuff off the bench. And now uh, he shows you his um, season five tryouts list. And as you know, very, very, very um, uh, usual thing for free folk it does not fit on the page so we had to move the move the header to the side so everything everything fits with these 10 activations crazy let's go yeah like <laughs> um, i think my my initial reaction was when i saw all the patch um information like i think we now have to go back to 10 activation um yeah. you will see whether this holds true or not but um this is a list where you have you start with Varamir, nothing wrong right you have um your three activations for a very nice price point, and and then obviously two skin changes. Not obviously, but I think you can do this now. It's a very good. They will probably replace for me the trappers. You see, um, there's no hidden traps in this list. 
as I said, one could be could be the sweet spot, but you don't have to, um, and you get a lot of flexibility with it. These are your ma main um, frontline troops. They will not hold up to a lot, but again, if you play smart with your Barrier and so on, you can you can make a lot out of them. Um, I have one Yarl included here with one skill changer unit because, like, imagine Shadow Cat, a uh, unit of free for graders, and a bear mm. forming a tag team. They can really mop up one flank, I, I imagine. Mm. And um, this is something I would love to to see as an option. And then we have the raiders with raid leader right from the beginning. Normally, you wait for your units to die to then bring in your um, units from Endless Horde because they include a raid leader. Um, but I feel like with a, with a seventh giant, uh, they together also can form like uh, a nice team. Um, and if they really contribute, or like if they really focus on one flank, um, you can make a lot out of this. And then you have um, your usual uh, NCUs, not your usual, but you have Lady Val, obviously, Igrid, yeah. um to, to control the movement game uh, with all your solo trays. And I always recommend trying out Men's Raider. I know that many Free Folk players don't do this right from the beginning, so this is something included. He didn't get changed, and I consider him to be... He's really I mean, Lady Val probably is the best, but like right after this, I would say Men's Raider, five points. So try this out. Yeah. Um, and now you have a, um, have a list with probably five solo trays. I mean, six, two skin changers, yeah, with, three yeah. animals, and um, the giant. And this this will demand a lot of positional skills and probably is um, yeah, there's a little bit of experience needed to make this list work. But um, you shouldn't be afraid of trying this out. And I think Free Folk now to, to, um, to be top notch really has to to put in a lot of work and training and experience um to be good and i personally like the direction they go yeah they, they head into yeah so okay i do not feel sorry for you because you know me as a night watch main uh i can't relate to all your problems right but 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a different story for oh, another time yeah. so if you want to like like learn how to deploy this to move this, position this, just jump jump on the Discord and talk to, 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 talk to Larks about it. He is happy to um, jump on each and every discussion on this list. Um, so now let's summarize um, what S5 did to the Free Folk. Yeah, I think it's one of the, <clears throat> as I said, more impactful changes that we saw mm -hmm. regarding the, the, the meta of a faction and what they prefer to pick and so on and so on so i think we will see definitely some trappers on the shelf um we will see less dire so different commanders uh on the top tables which is which, which is, is fine yeah um i'm really excited to see what will be the commander pairings um whether it will i think veromir will be one of them yeah. maybe it will be double veromir maybe we will see reaper or rattle shirt um i'm really curious to find yeah. this out and uh, we got some um, some units that we will see more often, some attachment that we will see more often. There are obviously uh, still some missing, you know. Um, mm. There are candidates that could use some love, but probably, I mean, the next change is uh, is right around the corner, so to speak. I mean, yep. you know, holiday season. We, it's, it's practically winter right now, right? So <laughs> It feels like it. True. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that covers uh, the Free Folk. Um, and um, before we let you go, I want to just want to say a big thank you to our Patreons once more that, you know, continuously contribute and make make all of this happen. Uh, thank you so much, guys, especially the Hits and Crits Lords. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. And... Um, Right, 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 right beside us, you see our um, Hits and Crits Tactics mat, which 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 is um, created uh, in collaboration with Playmats um, EU, and uh, this this Playmat really makes a big difference. We put a lot of brain into it and and include the deployment zones and the objectives, and you have a great tactics mat beside it, which holds all the cards you need and the tokens and all that kind of stuff. So just check it out. I will link it down in the description below. And again, thank you, Patreons, for making this thing happen um yeah and until we do the next video until we meet again with the hits and crits family roll those crits guys
Come for the hits and stay for the crits.